I just wasted 20, well, nearly 30 minutes of my life watching a Doug DeMuro review of the Tesla Model 3 Highland. I'm going to give you a quick recap of why so many people are firing off at Doug and, well, he's firing back at them over his new review. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I've got to admit, I've never seen a Doug DeMuro video ever before. I've since discovered he's not really an electric car fan. In fact, he thinks they're all appliances and he's really more into internal combustion. He's into like older performance cars and stick shifts, manual transmissions, you know, supercars, all that kind of thing. Anyway, quickly to recap his review of the Model 3, the biggest thing that I noticed was that the first nine minutes and 20 seconds of the video were just simply telling us stuff that were facts and features of the car, which I think everyone would already know by now because the Model 3 Highland's already been out for many months. There's, a, there's at least a hundred different videos that were made before Doug made his video. So I'm pretty sure most people watching the video would already know these things. So for the first nine minutes, you can skip that and get straight to 10 minutes if you really want to watch his video. But here's the thing. And this comment summed up what I read probably about 50 times or more in the comment section. I gave up looking through the comments because it was repeated so many times. Damn, you watch a Doug video of a car you don't own and you think he knows what he's talking about. Then you watch one of a car you own. He's absolutely clueless. He didn't fact check anything. This is why I like Jason Kamisa. He actually has a team of people double checking what he says so he doesn't say dumb and incorrect things over and over throughout the video. Now to be fair, some of the things he said were correct, but yeah, some of the things, in fact, quite a few things he said in the video were not correct. Very, very simple things like he thinks that the wheel covers are the actual LO wheels themselves when they're covers. There's a lot of different things that um, he did get wrong. And so I noticed at least 100 comments mentioning all the different things he got wrong. He doesn't respond to those, by the way. He only responds to things to fire back at people if he disagrees with them or something. If it's someone pointing out that he got something wrong, he just sort of says nothing. Anyhow, Doug does say some positive things about the Model 3, but overall, it's not a particularly positive review. But he does give it a score. So let's just fast forward. This is probably the most interesting part for most people. He says the Tesla Model 3 Highland is the third best electric car he has ever reviewed. He says that the 2021 Mustang Mac E GT is significantly better than the Tesla Model 3 long range uh, Highland version that he tested in this video. He says that it's six, he gives it a score of 63. He gives the Mustang Mac E from 2021 a score of 68. He gave the Tesla Model Y Performance a score of 68. He gives the Model 3, long range of the Highland, a score of 63. He gives the 2022 Hyundai or Hyundai Ioniq 5, uh, 63 as well, and the Kia EV6 GT line, 63. Now, the key reasons that he thinks um, it doesn't do well on the score is this. Styling, he says the styling is a 5 out of 10. It's very boring, he believes. Handling is a 4 out of 10. He very, very doesn't like the handling. And the fun factor is a 4 out of 10. He says that... It's fast, but in his opinion, not fast enough. All right, so we've got over the part where I mentioned that people correct, thing, correct him for saying things that are wrong, and they do that quite a lot. But anyway, here are the quick, here's a quick run over. Going to take just a few minutes. Interior is more premium than the old version. The dashboard, the trim, the mood lighting, he liked it. The biggest change is the rear touch screen. That's the thing that stood out to him the most. The phone app has great benefits. It enables you to do lots of things. He really likes the phone app. So Tesla's app for, you know, using a car. It has, the car has fantastic high tech features such as a blind spot camera. He loves the blind spot camera. He really doesn't like the fact that there is no screen directly in front of the driver. So no heads up display. He thinks it needs to have one of those. He says it's easy to press the steering wheel button to see different camera angles. He likes sentry mode. Doesn't mention anything about the dash cam, but he likes sentry mode. Um, he says there's a big drawback with the camera system and he says it's absolutely wild that the Tesla vehicles don't have a 360 degree bird's eye view. Now, that's kind of not true, kind of is true. Anyway, there's a lack of buttons. He mentions that on about 10 different occasions. Um, he's annoyed that the glove box does not have a handle. Uh, climate controls on the screen, having them on the screen is annoying, makes them harder to use. 
uh, doesn't display anywhere that the heated seats are on. He believes that there's a problem because if you get in the car, heated seats um, are on, you turn them on for, the, for say, passengers, and then what's going to happen is if there's no passenger, the heated seat's going to come on anyway, and it's a problem because you turned it on. That's actually not true. The heated seats actually will turn off if there's no one sitting in them, but Doug wasn't aware of that. Dog mode, he loves dog mode. Cool shortcut on the screen to use buttons on the steering wheel. He liked that. Automatic wipers are a problem. They don't work very well. I've heard that from a lot of people. That's probably one thing I've took away from this review that Tesla has yet to improve the automatic wipers. Tesla say they will be. There's some kind of new update that is coming. He likes the entertainment features on the front and rear screen. He likes the mirror covers and the big storage cubbies. You think lots of different storage spots in the various places in the car. He thinks they're really good. Uh, the mirror cover. So underneath the, the like the sun visor, you pull the sun visor and there's a, a mirror cover, a, a multi-stage mirror cover. He thought that was really cool. He says you can damage the window trim on the cars if you manually open the front doors. So that's a problem. He says the trunk is very big, much bigger than you would expect. Good feature. Uh, he says it's a very generic looking car. For him, it's boring. Uh, blind spot mount though looks stylish for a functional feature so on the side of the car there's like a, a little swirl design on the car it's a different color it's black and that's actually where the tesla blind spot camera sits and so he likes that feature he says the car is very boring to drive um, the steering is quick but it's very numb and tesla makes the steering really quick to disguise the fact that the handling is bad. He thinks the handling is bad. I'm not sure what he's meaning here because every single review that I've read of the new Tesla Model 3 long range says the handling is a big improvement and is actually really quite good. He says the car has way too much body roll. I've not heard any other reviewers say that. He's the first to say that. He said it's not a sports car, so that's a negative. It's not a car you'll fall in love with, he says. It does not elicit any kind of emotional response. It's a fantastic car at doing the appliance thing. It is the best car for commuting that he has ever tested. It makes commuting very easy. But he says um, it is simply an appliance, like a fridge or a microwave or a washing machine. It is, that's exactly what it is, an appliance. Now he says the charging network is great. It's um, The car is cheap to buy, it's cheap to own. You don't need to put gas in it. He thinks those are positives. Autopilot is great, but then he criticizes autopilot. Autopilot is great, but then he, yeah. Anyway, he compares the autopilot to his Mercedes-Benz. He says it's very similar to the way that his Mercedes-Benz autopilot works. But then he mentions a problem with autopilot. Um, he points out that um, there's something you've got to do to jiggle the steering wheel. A lot of people in the comments, probably a fair few people in the comments said, actually, Doug was wrong. You don't need to jiggle the steering wheel. You can just press a button. Anyway, he wasn't aware of that. So yeah, that's why fact checking could be a good idea for Doug. He says it's not a special car in any way, but it's very good at getting you from point A to point B. He says this, it's mind numbingly boring to look at and to drive. Um, but it is much more quiet and luxurious than the old model. He likes the minimalism of the car, but he says it can be annoying. And he wants a head to, heads up display. He mentioned that a few times. He doesn't like the fact that Tesla took away the stalks, but he says you'll quickly adapt to the changes. Tesla owners believe Tesla Autopilot. He believes that almost everyone who buys a Tesla or is a fan of Tesla thinks that only Tesla vehicles have Autopilot. No other cars have this kind of similar um, drive feature. Now, I don't think that's true. I think brandishing all Tesla fans or all Tesla owners saying they're all stupid that's what Doug's doing. He's really trying to pander to his audience here. Obviously, his audience, most of them don't like EVs. He's sort of pandering to them by saying it's just an appliance and um, it's really irritating. And all Tesla fans are morons. They all think that only Tesla vehicles have certain features and other vehicles don't have them. That's kind of what he says on a few occasions. I should point out again, because he says this about, I think about six or seven times, it's not fun or exciting. It's just a very good compliance car, similar to a dishwasher or a microwave. So... Interestingly, he believes the Model Y performance has much better handling and is more fun and it's a cooler car than the Model 3 Long Range uh, Highland. Anyway, I think actually some of the comments were more interesting than his video. Personally, I felt like going to sleep in his video. I felt like I was extremely bored. It's just me. I don't know. 
One comment said, I noticed when you were driving, it is very, very quiet. There was almost zero road noise. It's crazy how quiet it was. Another person said this, I think for the general population, the speed of electric cars is still insane. Most people buy a used Toyota or Honda cars that can do about nine second from zero to 60. So when they have the opportunity to buy something with a four second zero to 60, that's a huge increase in their passing ability. I think to Doug, a zero to 60 in the four second range is boring, but to most people, that's an amazing thing to have, especially in what is an appliance car. Now, yeah, there's, there's a lot of comments, like I said, criticizing the video saying it's, um, it needs to be fact-checked. And Doug, you've got, mate, honestly, you're a joke. I've got to say it. Uh, a lot of the comments were very forgiving to Doug because they're fans of Doug and they like him. But mate, if you're gonna do one video a week, for God's sake, I mean, I'm gonna swear, I, I feel like swearing here because how lazy is this guy? He has millions of subscribers. This channel could be making millions of dollars and he can't be bothered fact-checking a video when he only makes a video, one video every week or every, about one video every week. I mean, surely the guy can fact-check once. God, Doug, mate, I do seven or eight videos a day. Right now I've got three fractures in my foot. Right, this is not to elicit sympathy of any kind, just making a point. If I can do eight videos a day, then you can fact check making one video a week. Anyway, rant over, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope I saved you 29 minutes and 40 seconds of your life. Bye-bye.